Hey, hello, hello. So, I have just completed a thermal debind. Uh, that's uh, with the traditional kiln of a couple of parts, which I posted a little earlier. I had a uh, UPA and I had a couple of um, uh, impellers, which those are just sitting there right here. Um, but I'm most interested right now in the um, aluminum UPA, which is sitting over here. Um, why? Because I have zapped that in my microwave to do a microwave center. Um, I did three bursts of 10 minute segments, uh, 10 minute cycles for uh, the heating at max power. Uh, this is a 600 watt micro microwave, so it's very weak compared to normal microwave standards, but it's probably pretty good for doing what I'm doing here. Um, this is probably pretty hot, just to get a reading. Um, I had measured, let's see, uh, it's looking a little better now. Uh, we're only reading about 170 peak um, around on the crucible. Uh, earlier I was getting about uh, 620 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, on the inside it was molten hot, and uh, I, I saw a peak of around 1350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a little past the the aluminum melting point. So uh, I'm not really sure what I'm going to get from you know from this center, but um, we're gonna give it a shot. So I I need to put on a, um, a heat resistant glove because this will burn my hand and and I can't make YouTube videos anymore. So let's uh, put put you guys in the uh, in the old uh, tripod try to get this situated in a way that makes sense for everyone uh, okay let's see if we can zoom in a little bit all right there we go so while I'm putting on the heat resistant gloves um, again for anyone just popping in here uh, we have a aluminum part that we just centered in the microwave hopefully successfully um, but uncertain uh, for sure so first thing I'm going to do is take off again heat resistant gloves important we're going to take off the lid Okay, let's take a measurement here. Very reasonable. This has cooled down for about 25, 30 minutes. Uh, we're sitting close to the 400 peak temp, which is well under the max rating for these gloves. Um, okay, so uh, let's see if we can get a close up. So there's an interesting orange hue that wasn't there before so right around the edge here and around this um, there's an orange hue now I did add a aluminum flux on top this was thermally debound in my regular kiln but I added a um, uh, in about the same ring as this so this is probably some after effect from from that but let's go ahead and excavate this so that everyone can see what we're doing this this aluminum kiln uh, sorry this Microwave kiln was uh, made with some castable refractory and uh, there's um, silicon carbide elements that line the walls. Those are 3D printed. Uh, okay, so let's see what this looks like. I'm going to just excavate around the edge. Now actually, I do have another crucible here with some refractory that I believe I can use as a sort of a way to dump out the excess so that I don't have to worry about anything getting too hot on the outside. Okay, let's get some of this extra out here. I have a fan that's going to point this way so we don't blow any of this particle towards our mouth. That's getting hot. 
so right around, I don't know if you can see this, but we've started to form a spherical shape here around where the metal upa is sort of living. Um, and it's kind of clumping in one bit. Now, I don't know if this has something to do with the way that I, uh, whoop, well, it's out. <laughs> it's out. So, wasn't intended, but yeah, let's see if we can see this. It just kind of clumped out here, and we'll put it into focus so that everyone can see what I'm doing. I, again, I, I don't have any idea what this is going to look like. Um, let's get this focused. I don't have any idea what this is going to look like, if the aluminum is going to... Uh, properly centered or anything. Um, Aluminum is very uh, difficult to do um, because it oxidizes so so quickly. It's a, a very reactive metal um, and it has a shell around. But the thought was that uh, the microwave should be able to break this as well as using the uh, the flux, uh, so that it can properly center, and I do seem to be getting a a relatively upa-like shape. Now I don't know how hot this is yet, so I'm not going to just go reach out and touch this with my bare hand. But there does seem to be a pretty metallic sound to this, which is interesting. I'm not sure what this bottom piece that seems to be protruding out here is. Let's knock that off. Oh, that actually is the top. So, of the upa, this would be ears. It, it does have a very interesting metal sound to it when I'm hitting it with this little trowel. Uh, not the same as some of the other tests I've been doing. Now, let's see if I can just knock some of this off with the tongs. I, I want to try to save a lot of this ballast, but I have a bucket of water over here which I can quench this, this part in so we can kind of see what it looks like without all of this fluffy white stuff. See, maybe you can see that. It's, it's in there. And again, this was centered at, um, with a microwave. <laughs> I just bought the microwave on Amazon. It was about 60 US dollars. What is going on here with this, this headpiece? That's not what it looked like. So, I'm not really sure why this is being so difficult to, there we go excavate. This probably has something to do with uh, contaminants in my ballast from previous centers. I uh, use a lot of zinc paste and all sorts of other stuff that most people don't use. Um, so that's probably what this is. But it is excavating fairly is that an ear? Uh oh. I think we lost an ear. Van Gogh'd it. Okay. Um, maybe lost an ear. I don't know. Well, I'm still unsure. I'm going to go ahead and quench this in some water. So let's get this closer. We'll quench this. I'm sure it's pretty hot. As you can hear, maybe. Quench pretty well. Now, this was a hollow part, um, which is pretty unique to how uh, this this method works. Is that it? You know, this was directly 3D printed, and so I can print it in whatever shape that I'd like. And uh, to save material, I used a hollow bottom, and then I. Um, filled that area with the ballast 
so that I could save uh, material, uh, reduce the weight. Not that this is an engineering part, but reduce the weight and, uh, well, just kind of show some capabilities that you can't easily do with other methods. Okay, well, this is interesting. It's looking metal. Um, if this is actually aluminum and it's actually solid, this will have been my best attempt yet. Um, I'm not going to know for sure until I clean this up, but let's see. Let's see. Are we, are we solid? Let's do a little hit test. It sounds metal. That's interesting. Um, pretty excited about that. So I'm going to clean this up and I'll probably make a short or something or a community post to show this, um, the results. Uh, there Again, this shows the hollow area here. Uh, if this worked out, this will be, um, this will have been my best aluminum test yet. So anyway, thanks for tuning in and uh, I'll give some updates here in a minute.